So thought me and Sarah could introduce ourselves um, and then maybe get a quick intro from all of the moms that are here. Uh, and a uh, couple things I think uh, when I give my intro that I want to just stick out there in the universe for people to think about um, <clears throat> is just what are some of the challenges that you face as becoming a mother um, working in this space because uh, it is it is very male dominated uh, and so kind of challenges you have there and then what ways can we help each other um, and what are some of our our hardships so I'll start and I'll, I'll as part of my intro add a little bit of flavor to all of these things and hopefully we can have a great discussion and help some new moms out so my name is Rupa Makadia. I work at Janssen. Um, I've been here for 10 years and along these 10 years I have uh, two daughters um, and I have been working the whole time full time um, and really raising my children and also as a part of this tenature I uh, completed my PhD and that was also a very difficult time to be raising two young children and then trying to develop both personally um, with my academic uh, endeavors and then also um, be able to develop uh, professionally. So I think some of the challenges I've faced over these years is really um, getting a push. So I think it's really easy for moms to say, I have too much on my plate. I'm really just going to leave all this extra stuff but you should really think about how you can push yourself to um, open up and to be able to get some of the development opportunities for yourself, because I think it is very rewarding. While children have their own rewards, some good, some bad, um, I think having the additional um, perspective and having the professional development is, is a great thing. So one thing I have um, have learned or have really benefited from is having some kind of mentorship from someone. So at Janssen, we have a lot of opportunities to have mentors. So throughout my career here, I have mentors that have been mothers, I have had mentors um, who have just been there to help support my professional development, find opportunities that work for me and work for what I am trying to find and I know sometimes us moms can get lost in those details and really don't know where we want to go and so having some mentorship can really open that up for us. I'm going to stop there and <laughs> um, have Sarah introduce herself and then we can have everyone go around. Yeah sure um, so hey everyone I'm uh, Sarah Seeger um, I'm Director of Data Science at IQVIA um, and I've been at IQVIA for about three and a half years, I think it is, nearly four. Um, so I've been in Odyssey sort of since then, essentially. Um, my background has always been within uh, healthcare analytics, data science. I've got a good 25 plus years experience. Um, but now in my current role, obviously sort of at a certain level, we sort of move further away from being amongst all the granularity of research, but, you know, still overseeing it all, which is exciting. Um, I'm a mum of one um, so, and he's actually 13 um, but to be honest um, when um, I had Jack um, I was kind of really at the very beginning of my sort of my career ladder so at the time I was working in the NHS in the UK as a, like a senior analyst and was really you know I really had that drive to sort of do more research get more involved in the analysis and statistics um, and, you know, having the drive wasn't the problem. It was really around sort of, um, you know, prioritising what I wanted to do. But obviously my life was now upside down because I've now got this small child, but also um, uh, my husband uh, is, is in the police force. So he has like very uh, odd shifts that I had to work around. And so there were times when I felt like almost like a single parent because I was having to, you know, spin my plate and you know, you know, spin the home plate and and be here, there, and everywhere, and you know, combine that with all sort of the hormone issues, and you know, just crying over the fact that I've just found the coffee that I made ten, you know, hours ago, and I haven't got around to drinking it, uh, <laughs> which I kind of still do, but you know, I think that's more just <laughs> me being overworked. But um, it's you know, it's been 
a great journey from when he was born to sort of now and even then it's still you know there are still challenges but it my world sort of looks very different um and that's because hopefully I can sort of help with talking about my experience of trying to find that support um and Rupa you mentioned about you know mentorship I think that's absolutely uh key because that's really helped my side as well um you know and certainly being in a sort of a male dominated industry you know of tech and data um it's trying to find you know other inspirational women um, or even then just other inspirational people who have the time and the availability to be able to you know take five minutes out to say well hey Sarah what do you want to do what's your vision you know what can I do to help in it, it, it that's kind of like a refreshing conversation and the, I remember the first time I had it it was like well I don't know I kind of want to do more but I've got lots of things happening so I don't know where to start or what to do first and so you know it's been it's been a sort of a, a challenging sort of 13 years that he's been here but you know even now that he's 13 um there's like different challenges um so you know yeah it's good it's good um and yeah, I from the at 13 sort of year periods um I have sort of moved up to where I wanted to be which has been amazing um I've had some great colleagues that have helped and supported me so it can be done it's just a case of you know well how can it be done and what what do people really need to help you know sort of to get going and to feel as though that they've got all the support they need to be able to sort of drive themselves forward so that was me in a nutshell kind of a big nutshell but <laughs> Awesome. Does anyone want to share next? Erica. <laughs> yeah, I could share. Uh, so uh, my name is Eric Voss. I work at Janssen with Rupa um, in epidemiology, and I have one son who's nine. And I guess, um, so I guess Rupa, should I just sh like maybe share something that I think about like being as a working mom and having just one kid? <laughs> sure. I guess um, I always think about, well, I, I think one of the things that was really helpful for me is, um, so I have one kid, but uh, my husband is a consultant with Deloitte, which basically means he's non-existent. <laughs> um, so I'm kind of like a single parent. And so one of the things that we've done along the way is we've gotten some help around the house. And so like um, I have, um, we've had like, they're kind of like mommy's helpers. She comes and helps me um, with making dinner, with doing laundry, with picking up Zachary. And I think, you know, I th before we got the help, I kind of felt like I should be able to do it all. But then I recognized like getting any any help that you can get gives you time to either invest in yourself. So like one of the things I can do like when she comes over is like while she's starting dinner I can go for a run in, in the basement or something like that um or I can be investing that time in Zachary like helping him with his homework um so I think before we had the help I was like I, I should be able to just do this like why can't every everybody does this but I, like after I had the help I was like oh it's so much better and I'm able to invest more in my family by having the help um so I know it's not always feasible for everybody and I feel very blessed that it's something that we can do, but even small things, any help is help. 100% you bring up a really good point is asking for help, recognizing <laughs> when you need the help. And um, I think both of you talked about it a little bit, but even understanding that there is potential to be able to develop yourself and having that drive and like you said the vision you know that's really important and um and i think everyone should should spend time at least recognizing that about themselves yeah and i think one thing is that i know i certainly felt it was i mean i i went back to full-time work when jack was only five months old 
um I kind of had to you know for monetary purposes just for because I wanted to um whatever but at the time um and I, I fortunately had my parents both around and they sort of only live about four miles away um and they just retired so they were more than willing to help with you know looking after Jack when he was a baby and they absolutely loved it so I was really sort of honored um to be in that position but in the back of my brain I did feel that maybe I'd failed um, or maybe I wasn't being the best mum possible because I'm trying to, you know, be a mum. But also, you know, do people think that I'm just concerned about my career? You know, are my priorities back to front? And I was and I was kind of beating myself up about it and then, you know, trying to go, no, 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 ignore them, ignore them. But it would never sort of go. And so, you know, however many years have gone past now it's kind of like no absolutely not there should be no you know no negativity around people wanting help or even finding help like Erica you said you know it doesn't matter how small even if it is just someone just to you know go down the road and buy you a pint of milk um or whatever you know you guys do in the US but we go out for pints of milk uh, <laughs> um you know little things like that it's like do not be, you know, embarrassed or shamed about those sort of things. You know, we've all got various missions. And I know that it took me a very, very long time to sort of get over that and just go, no, I'm I'm just a strong woman. I'm a strong mum and I'm balancing everything. And to be able to be the best mum and to be the best whatever role I was at the time, I just need a bit of a help, you know, a little bit of help. And there were so many people around who were offering to do that, regardless of whether it was paid help or, you know, family. Um, it's, you know, it, no one should be ashamed by that. So absolutely, if, if people do, you know, feel as though they need that, then absolutely should go for it. Awesome. Do we have any other brave moms who want to share a little about themselves? Hi, um, I'm Bhavini Nai. Um, I so we're actually so I'm from UT Southwestern uh, Medical Center in Dallas, and we're actually just starting out on our Odyssey journey. So I'm sort of transitioning from a um, um, data analytics role to like the Odyssey, and so I think this was useful for me to kind of get an idea of what to expect and that sort of thing. Awesome. Hey. I can go next. Hi, everyone. I'm Paula. Nice to see you. Some familiar faces. Yes. Not a mom yet. Hopefully soon. Oh. <laughs> and I'm just trying to gather all the information and advice and that I can at this point because I feel overwhelmed at this point already. And, <laughs> and I'm getting all the help I can. <laughs> as much as I can already just like balancing you know just the, the household with the workload with personal and and you know like um personal life has been tricky over the last year but I'm just yeah just trying are, to get all the information and advice I can before I fully embark on this journey oh. Paula, what do you have any current challenges that you're starting to work through professionally? Um, currently, not really, but just like a bit of, you know, like I don't know how to frame it. Um, just like I don't know how to frame it, honestly. You know what? I um I didn't realize this when I became a mom. I actually realized this when I was working full time at J and J, and I decided to go back and get my master's, which meant I was spending basically like I was like before I went and got my master's, I would work um like I'd come in at eight and I'd stay until like you know really <laughs> late in the evening because uh, I hadn't had my son yet, and um. And then when I got my master's, I kind of had to like leave at five and then go home and do homework. And what I realized is like, I still was doing okay at work, 
even when I wasn't working insane hours. And so what I like, you know, when you only have so much time in your life. And when all of a sudden you're not allowed to just spend all of your hours working, you're still able to figure out how to get it done. You actually become more efficient. And what I realized was like before when I was working like all day long, I would take a really long time at lunch or like I would be chatting with coworkers and, you know, like for more than I should have been. And like when you, when your time kind of gets scrunched and that's what happens when you become a mom, you just realize like, I have to really just prioritize where I'm spending my time. Mm -hmm. And so I realized like, it's totally possible to do a really good job during that, like working hours. Um, You just have to be selfish with your time. And then once people just realize like, oh, like, Like, you know, Rupa's going to go home at five every day. People just become comfortable with that and they're fine and everything continues on. But before that, I thought like, oh, if I like leave before seven, people are going to think I'm not a good employee. And that's just not, it's just not true. Yeah. And then other thing I think, which is advantageous to all of us is most people, I think in this field are afforded a little bit of flexibility. So like I often, you know, take a small break, go pick up my daughter, walk, you know, it's walking distance. So we walk back home and then, you know, I'm able to get on in the evenings because they go to bed early. Um, Even if I'm not doing work, I'm just organizing my time, thinking about, you know, what I'm going to tackle next. And then this is a time really for me where I think about professional development. And when I think about what do I want to do next? It's it's quiet. Everyone's sleeping. Um, and, you know, that's the time you take for yourself to to really think about what you want to accomplish next and um, just organizing your day. And I think that that's also very helpful just to decompress um, every so often. Yeah, and I think one thing, certainly from the COVID pandemic, um, probably one of the only advantages is that I think, you know, everyone's just become a lot more flexible you know I think during the pandemic everyone was probably working lots of hours because you know what else are we going to do we're just going to be sitting at home working so I might as well just do a 16 hour day why not um but you know now that we're getting back to this new normal or whatever phrase people want to term it um I think most industries are you know certainly a lot more flexible and certainly you know being parents um that you know as Rupert as you said there's always been that flexibility so you know should there be you know that doctor's appointment or you know the school drop off or whatever that's that's always been there but now it almost feels as though certainly from my side it's it's sort of more in the forefront you know it's now very normal to hear it's like well no I can't have that 8 30 a.m meeting because you know I've got to go and do the, the school drop off or no I'm going to be offline between four and five because I'm going to do the school pickup you know all of that sort of stuff so it I certainly feel that it's a bit kind of easier um and part of me thinks if only it wasn't that stressful back when Jack was a baby because I honestly felt that all I was doing was living by my watch. It's like, right, okay, so I must do this. I must feed by this time. And I've got to get on this call at this time, you know, or I'd be in the office. It's like, right, it's five to five. I've got five minutes to pack up to then drive home, which takes me an hour and a half. And I've got to go and pick up Jack from my parents. And I've got to feed him. Otherwise, he'd be really grumpy and he won't sleep for eight hours. And then it'll be really awful. And I'll be grumpy the next day. That's kind of like <laughs> how I lived like the first two, maybe five years of of him sort of. Being, and it was just crazy. But I think now it certainly does, like I said, feel that, you know, I think that work life balance, I think, is now a much bigger conversation. And, you know, like I said, a lot of the industries are sort of more aware of it and obviously want to make sure that their employees are, you know, happy you know, to get the best out of them, you know, so. I think it's a, a better situation. Yeah, and you should definitely use that to your advantage. Absolutely. Anyone else want to share anything? We even heard Stephanie. Oh, we can't oh, hear you. We can't hear you. Ah, oh, sorry, I was muted. Hi, I'm Stephanie. I work at Johns Hopkins. I've been working at uh, National. COVID Cohort Collaborative uh, under Dr. Shute. And it's been lots of fun transforming uh, three or four or five different CDM format into OMOP. And I've learned a lot through Kristen and 
Claire. Um, they helped me with many of my questions, uh, and I hope to share some of the things that I learned um, uh, back with the Odyssey community. Um, I, I'm a mom of five. I uh, raised them and kicked them all out of the house <laughs> so that I could go back to school. I, I enrolled at Johns Hopkins master's program. Um, I'm a student of Paul Naji. Um, I hope to do some capstone project that could possibly lead to uh, maybe a PhD thesis in um, Odyssey uh, related area um, that uh, relates to, you know, more uh, clinical outcome and how we could harness the data to figure out what works and what does not work for the patient. Um, so if there's a good PhD or master's capstone project that could parlay into a PhD thesis, um, I would welcome your, you know, ideas and uh, maybe brainstorming session. Um, I think being a mom and working full time, it's, it's it never an easy balance, but you just have to figure out what, what balance you want. And it's not going to be easy. Uh, it, it doesn't get easier. <laughs> you just have to figure out what works for you. And if it, you know, younger of me, myself, used to be like paranoid about being perfect about everything. Uh, perfect at do this or, or not even volunteer unless I know a perfect picture of what needs to be done. Um, but now I, um, I think that Waiting for that perfectness is actually enemy of the good, where you just have to do it and see what works. If it doesn't work, you do it again and make it better. You you cannot have that fear uh, prevent you from going forward, which I often find younger engineers uh, do, uh, especially women engineers. Uh, so I would like to, you know, maybe help, uh, you know, that different environment for women engineers. Um, uh, I, I majored in electrical engineering at MIT, so I was often with many men uh, who just thought they were the greatest and the best of the world uh, <laughs> with lots of ego. So I, I don't have any problems dealing with them. It's just so you just laugh it off and you just participate in their discussion um, and not be afraid to say things that, you know, uh, it may not be 100% correct, but you're, you know, oh, you're all learning together, so it's okay. Wow, Stephanie, that was solid. <laughs> <laughs> that was great veteran advice. Um, it comes from having five children. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I guess so. Make sure oh, yeah. It's totally fine. <laughs> so one of, one of my, uh, I have twins who are identical, and uh, so even with their same genetic makeup, there were two different individuals. So I thought that if I figure out how to make things work with my first, I could uh, use that knowledge for the rest of the four, but actually it doesn't work that way. So each time, each child is different. Um, they have their own personality, even with the same DNA, they have their own uh, distinct traits. So it's almost like a driving a shift car with the five gears and I had to shift my gear and it's like, who am I talking to now? <laughs> Yeah. So, um, and I think it's like life too, when you're uh, dealing with, you know, personal life, your, uh, you know, work life, your uh, technical engineering life, a technical field, it changes every two to three years, things that you have to learn, it's constantly changing. So unless you uh, give yourself some time to read up on new things, you all are always going to feel behind. So what I try to do is uh, give myself a few hours every week to kind of learn something new and read something new. Um, that's how I learn Odyssey uh, stuff as well. So. <laughs> so thank you. That was that was amazing. A lot of good little nuggets uh, thinking about ever changing. I think raising children is ever changing, as you said. And so being able to be OK with the occasional punch that comes along with both professional and um, personal life is is some really really good advice yeah well and, and, uh, and uh, oh sorry go ahead 
And I have a spouse who went on for many years of training, both MD and PhD and fellowship and specialty and subspecialty in clinical. So, uh, you know, he's, he's always busy. And so if you're going to complain, it's, it, it, it's never going to satisfy to the level that you like. So you just have to deal with whatever the life throws at you. Yeah, no, that, that is very, very true. And it, it's hard. I mean, there were many days where I was almost in tears. Erica can attest to those tears. I was the coworker who chatted extra. Uh. <laughs> we chatted together. No, no. <laughs> um, but yeah, but but yeah, it, it really does pay itself at the end. And um, I'm sure Stephanie can attest to that. You know, watching, I have two girls, watching your children see you succeed and be proud of you mm-hmm. and all you do is is definitely worth it at the end of the day. Yeah, I think definitely the last two years were, I think, weird with raising kids. Like, I definitely you know like first or at least in New Jersey at first they were home for the that first year of the pandemic so it's like okay <laughs> I need to be working but then I have my at the time I guess he was seven now he's going from you know they're just learning to read and write and now they need to do everything on a google chromebook like that you know like he couldn't type like he didn't know how to interact with the class. And so it was just so stressful. And I remember at the end of the year, my husband was like, oh, I don't feel like you learned anything. And I'm like, you know what? It's going to be okay. Every kid in the world went through this. They're all going to live. Like, <laughs> and so, yeah, like, do I think he like regressed during the pandemic? Totally. But I'm like, eh, we just, we're just trying to survive. I'm okay. No one died. <laughs> it, it, well, that that's it. Like no one died. We were literally all friends right survive. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, so yes. I but like now we're back. I'm seeing him kind of catch back up. But I'm like, every kid in the whole world went through this. So I'm sure in like 20 years, there's gonna be some like thing where they'll be like, oh, it was the COVID generation. Like you know, like they right. have this blip. <laughs> They'll be okay. Yeah. One thing that's kind of, I think, kept me going is that, um, and I think I'm still trying to convince myself this, but I'm, I'm kind of pretty much there. But it's like, no matter sort of what the current sort of problem, challenge, issue, or sort of like shit scenario that I think I'm going through at that time, it is just a phase. And, and that, you know, all just boiled down to just being, you know, a mother and having a child or children, um, you know, it's all just a phase. Like they're teething. It's a phase, you know, or they won't sleep. It's a phase or, you know, they won't eat this. It's a phase. Um, and then even bringing that into, say, my own sort of work life, personal development, professional development is like, right, OK, I've now hit another hurdle. OK, it's just a phase, you know, and I've kind of brought that sort of mentality with me even with you know just in my current role you know it's like right okay this is proving a bit challenging not quite sure I should be doing this or if I can do it no screw that I can you know it's just a phase I just need to go back to going like Stephanie you said taking you know that small bit of time out and I'm I'm now I've now gone back to it um just one hour each morning before the day really kicks in just going, right, I'm going to get through my emails, going to gather my thoughts, work out what my plan of attack for today is, and then just sort of hit it. And so, yeah, I think just thinking that, look, everything is a phase, so just break everything down into almost like bite-sized chunks. It does really just help, you know, with everything, even when it, you know, down to the point of, you know, all oh, the baby's crying again and it won't feed. It's like, right, it's just a phase. Hopefully it would be a 10-minute phase and not a 10-month phase. Uh, <laughs> but that like I said it's just I've just carried on applying that but just to different scenarios and it really does work because I think you know Paolo you said at the beginning that you know everything is just overwhelming and sometimes that feeling of you know being overwhelmed doesn't necessarily go and it's not as if you know it gets easier you just learn how to sort of get on with it and actually deal with it and sometimes almost use that kind of energy to to whatever you're trying to focus on at that time so you know you can 
almost flip you know that sort of challenging moment to a positive and I, I'm not saying that's super easy but it can be done and you know you can then bring that through you know young sort of motherhood all the way through to later you know Stephanie's done it with five kids kick them out so she, she's got the answers <laughs> but uh, it, it helps it helps everything's a phase bite-sized chunks thanks Sarah that's helpful mm -hmm. <laughs> It's all about the balance too so just trying to figure out you know what works for you what how much time you want to spend and how much energy you want to spend on each you know part of the yeah. pieces that make up you your own being so absolutely are, you know, like evolving pieces they can you know shift and change depending on whatever life is throwing at you yep. exactly and it always will throw at you. It's always, there's always going to be something else around that corner. But, you know, there is just no point being anxious or worrying of whatever, you know, life is going to throw you next. It's like just yeah. cope with what's happening now, you know, and your, you know, your your drive, your vision, your, you know, your development that you want to sort of pursue. That will still be there and that will still happen. It's just, you know, I think it's just trying to. Uh, mitigate or at least just work with that sense of you know being overwhelmed um, and then sort of once you've sort of you know jumped that hurdle it's then you know sort of then moving on and working out sort of what that next pathway looks like. Right. Yeah so when I was studying electrical engineering at MIT I felt like it was drinking water out of fire hydrant and I felt like wow what do I what do I <laughs> what is this so and I felt like when is this gonna end but I as life went on it didn't really end but you learn how to deal with drinking water out of five hundred yeah that's what you can and you move on <laughs> I think I, I I'm always really big into you need to invest back into yourself to be, I think, to be the best model mother. And um, and I know that could take many forms, but I'm a really big on like you should make time to exercise um, because I think if you exercise, um, you know, not only does it make you a healthier individual, but it, it, it just like mentally, I think it's a good thing to do. Um, and I know, um, uh, like, you know, I like right after I had my son, like I wasn't doing any exercise and I think it was just making, like, I was just feeling so depressed. And then I figured out how to actually get some exercise. Was it fun waking up at four in the morning to go to the gym? <laughs> no. Um, but I will say like I had invested in that um, and as Rupa knows and a lot of people on this call know I got really sick um, after my when my son was three um, but because I had spent a year going back to the gym I was like healthy and was able to like kind of push through that and so like I'm a really I'm really big on like you you have to take time for yourself um, and yeah it could be painful and at 4 a.m. but like um, you know, if you don't invest in yourself, then there's nothing left to give when like shit hits the fan. And you drag Rupa to a 5k with you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this time I will be prepared for that 5k. <laughs> I've been running. So. <laughs> no, I completely agree. I think, you know, even even taking you know sort of smaller amounts of time so I mean for, for me it's you know I didn't feel when I had Jack that I could even sort of really get into my exercise I was always sort of into my exercise before and then I had Jack and just felt that you know this body's not doing anything and I don't mm -hmm. want it to do anything mm -hmm. um, but you know in those early days I would do something so simple like I would just have a bath you know and I'd mm -hmm. be like mm -hmm. I'd say husband obviously he'd be around at this point it wouldn't leave the child on its own um I took close the door and be like right I'm having a bath I might be 10 minutes I might be an hour I might come out shriveled like a prune who cares <laughs> this is me time and you know I still do that now to the point that both my husband and Jack 
are kind of like, oh my God, mum, are you having another bath? You live in that bath. I'm like, guys, seriously, this is the only time when I'm in this house that I do actually relax. You know, it's just me. I'll either have a book or I won't, or I'll be on my phone, you know, TikTok, whatever, you know, that. <laughs> um it doesn't matter it's just about having that time to yourself just to you know just to chill out and it's just so important it doesn't matter if it's just five minutes grab what you can or if it is going out for the 5k run for you know you crazy ladies that do that (laughs) (laughs) Um, then you know whatever floats your boat I think it's just so important and certainly now where you know we're coming out of this the, the pandemic and everyone's been frazzled from just working all these insane hours and then now for those of you that are new mums I mean wow yeah that's it's going to be overwhelming times but you know little little bits of just me time is just and that's why I have so many darn candles on my windowsill because even now I'm like I just need an extra bit of calm let me go and light something (laughs) yes whatever works yeah I mean and to that point Sarah be creative with what you do yes even your exercise put somebody in a stroller take a walk yeah real easy real chill and something you can do um and yeah the bath thing reminded me that's how I survived the pandemic I I have a little tub I put my two little ones there and I'd sit right outside the door they were old enough to like sit and uh then I would take my calls and they'd play in the bathtub (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah and you know like when Zach was at the daycare I literally I I would be that mom who was the last mom and like to pick him up but I would leave work I'd go for a run and I'd literally roll up the last minute and like I was like I'm not gonna feel bad about it like because like he's being watched he's safe and I could take some time for myself for like you know 30 minutes to an hour now he's uh, now he's nine so he likes to tell me about how he's the last kid (laughs) (laughs) like you're fine fine (laughs) so that reminds me yeah, that reminds me of story. So, uh, so my oldest with four siblings was having a bit of rough time, and uh, we're all very busy. So, and so one day, uh, on our way to school, she was sharing something, and I thought, well, okay, so mommy and you are going to take today off. Uh, instead of taking you to school, we're just going to go see a movie. So I skipped out of my work. She skipped out of her school and we went to see a movie. Aww. So it, it's okay to have a time off. If you needed a, that time off, you just, and when, if the one child is not behaving, you, you know, you say you, you have to go to the corner and just have some time off time for yourself. Right. Yeah. So you could do the same thing to yourself and tell your kids, Hey, mommies need to take this time off because I'm not able to, uh, you know, control my anger and my stress, so I need to take this time off. So I'm going to stand in a corner and do whatever I need to do. Please, um, you know, respect that time for me. And so you could just share that with your kids and do this, do it. It's okay. Yeah. And they get to see that as well, you know, because, I mean, as they get older, they'll be like, oh, mom, do you remember that time, you know, that we both had that day off and I was out of school? And, you know, it, they'll they'll remember that. And then as they sort of get older into adulthood, they'll just naturally have that sort of mentality to go, do you know what? It's been a bit crazy. I just need to have just one day off, a bit of time out. And do you know what? I'm going to take the day off. I'm going to do absolutely nothing or, you know, something else that's completely different. And there is nothing wrong with that. You know, everyone needs to do that from time to time. And I think, you know, certainly with children when they're at school, there's that whole thing of, no, they must be at school. And here in the UK, if they're not at school, then you can get fined and, you know, there's kind of all these big regulations around it. Um, right. But, you know, if they see that and they see that that's OK, then, you know, as they grow up, hopefully that will just sort of go with them and help them as well. So there's, right. um, it's that whole kind right. of, you know, um, sort of mental and emotional sort of awareness of, you know, understanding when things are just getting a bit too much for yourself, mm-hmm. you know, just take the time out. Yeah, she still talks about it, so I think that's good. <laughs> she wants it again. <laughs> when she comes along and goes, Mom, I'm feeling a little bit stressed. <laughs> Want to take <laughs> it now? 
Stephanie, out of your five, how old's the uh, youngest? Uh, she just turned 20. Oh, good. You really oh, can, wow. can kick them out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she, she had a tough time during COVID because uh, she was graduating from high school. And, you know, all the proms canceled, all the parties oh, canceled, yeah. graduation celebration canceled. And then her first year of college, she spent it at home because it was all online. So she, she's having a bit of tough transition time. But I told her, hey, if you want to take five years to graduate, I'm totally okay with that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Nice. We're at time. So any closing thoughts from anyone? All right, ladies. Hold your head up high. <laughs> and uh, we should all be here to support each other. Um, and Odyssey is a great place for for support and networking and working together. Yeah. Yep. And I got a lot of support from Claire and uh, Kristen. Oh yeah. And never be afraid to vent. Just find find a pal. Uh, you can go. Do you know what? Today's a really crap day. I'm going to vent at you, and then just get it out. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, ladies. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you, you, ladies. Have a great day. Great week. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.